Juan Egel suspended from the National Assembly for four days. 2017 goal targets are passed. President Granger condemns Juan Egel for his actions in Parliament. And a 16 year old disappears after leaving home for lessons. Those were the top headlines for the week ending December 15. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good afternoon. Starting things off on MTV News Update's Weekend Review, we tell you that a fun day ended deadly for a quartet when the car in which they were traveling in toppled several times before slamming into a tree. According to reports, the driver lost control of the vehicle at Perseverance Maikoni last night. Find it more on this, Nikhil John, the report. Dead are Abiana Hubbard, Ranella Benfield, Stephen Phillips, and Afish Harris, all of the east coast of Demerara. According to reports, the quartet was heading in the direction of Georgetown from Maikoni when the vehicle in which they were traveling in toppled several times before coming to a halt after slamming into a tree at Maikoni. The driver of the motor car, Stephen Phillips, reportedly lost control of the car which caused it to topple. Two of the occupants were trapped in the car. Firefighters were forced to cut through the mangled car to pull out the body. According to mother of Abiana Hubbard, Michelle Meredith, she warned her daughter not to go with her friends. The woman explained to media operatives that Hubbard was determined to leave the house with her friends. I just warned her about friends. I just warned her about friends. And she's this friend type, you know, other set of friends. I think for me, if she didn't listen when I told her not to go, I should stay home and stay home. I don't know. But it's the friends that keep calling her to go. The friends that keep calling her on the phone to go. Meredith said she was informed of the fatal accident by her eldest daughter. The family eventually visited the accident scene at Perseverance, Maikoni, last night. However, her daughter was taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation while they were en route to the scene. The woman recalled that earlier on Sunday, the family was discussing plans for the remainder of the year. Only yesterday I was outside. Matter of fact, we were outside, myself, Abiana, my Kaya, my two grand and Candacy. And we were talking about Christmas and she was so excited for this holiday, right? Because there is some renovation we're doing. And she was so excited. And um, as she was getting a call on the phone and she said that she was going, I said, Abiana, don't go on the road, man, too. I said, I got to go to work tomorrow, wash your clothes. And so, so she said, man, she have to go to work for 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And she going to wash. I said, man, you know people's got to wake you up. She said, no, man, I can get up early and I go wash. And, you know, I was in, out, in, out. And then next thing I know, she dressed. And that was it. The relatives of the other individuals who perished in a fatal accident were unable to be reached for a comment. Reports are that the four persons were heading down from a party at Maikoni when tragedy struck. Investigations are ongoing. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. As expected, the drama involving opposition member of parliament continued today with the Speaker of the National Assembly announcing that he has been suspended for four days. The MP was also blocked from entering public buildings and was later arrested and released on his own recognizance. Here's more. As the second day of the budget debates got underway, Speaker of the National Assembly announced that Opposition Member of Parliament Juan Egil will be further suspended from the sitting for the next four days. This came on the heel of a motion that was moved by Government Chief Whip Amna Ali to have Egil suspended for the remainder of the sitting. I wish to refer this National Assembly to Standing Order 473. I wish to move that this member be suspended from the service of the assembly for the next four sittings uh -huh. of this assembly. Standing Order 47-2 states that the Speaker shall order any member whose conduct is grossly disorderly to withdraw immediately from the assembly during the remainder of the day's sitting and may direct such steps to be taken as required to enforce this order. 
Opposition leader Barry Jagdeo, who stood at a point of order, tried to seek clarity on the issue, but this was shut down by the Speaker. This, coupled with the opposition's disallowance to further question the government on the remaining agency estimates, saw mass exodus from them. However, the opposition rejoined the House after about half an hour to continue scrutinizing agencies, which were highlighted on the second day. Meanwhile, outside the Parliament gates, the drama continued today as was expected. PPP Member of Parliament, Juan Egil, was prevented by officers from entering public buildings. The Member of Parliament came as usual in his white vehicle, but was stopped by officers on brick dam. The officers claimed that he cannot go close to the Parliament, an order they claimed was given to them by Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Barton Scotland. However, the MP maintained as a lawmaker he has a right to scrutinize the budget. As such, he will stand as an elected member of the National Assembly and represent the people. You are handling me, sir. Mr. Azor. You are handling me. Could you kindly step back and give police the You are handling me, please. I am not resisting arrest. I am asking that my rights be fair to me. Can I understand what That piece of rain, yes. As I said, I have to resist the arrest. Mr. Gajello should not enter Parliament or his precincts. Form of such, and if he breaks in, she must be arrested. MP also claimed he was kept under surveillance and was even obstructed on his way to the public buildings. He was later escorted to the Brickdown Police Station by officers and was released on his own recognizance. On a brighter note, gold declaration is increased for the year, surpassing its target according to subject minister Raphael Trotman. The target for 2017 is 694,000 ounces. Find it more on this, Nickel John, the report. Minister of Natural Resources Rafa Trotman, during his budget presentation on Friday last, announced that gold declaration has surpassed last year's target of 600,000 ounces. He noted that because of prudent management of the Ghana Gold Board and changes at the board, additional income has been forthcoming. As of necessity, we've had to clean house, Mr. Speaker, because some things were discovered where billions of dollars were being either moved through or siphoned off of the Ghana Gold Board. We have reduced the deficit, which we inherited, Mr. Speaker, through bad trading in 2012 and 2013. We've brought the deficit down from 14 billion, Mr. Speaker, to $6.7 billion. The Natural Resources Minister said, the 694,000 ounces for this year has already been surpassed and is well making its way to the 700,000 ounces. So when we're told that we are not producing, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what figures or what fake news or what reports or fake reports my friend is reading. Mr. Speaker, we have an aggressive roads program which I will get a chance, I hope, to be questioned about what roads because I have a list of about 40 roads to read out. This year, Mr. Speaker, the Gold Board has earned for the country 744 million US dollars as against 730 million of 10 for 2016. We are doing better in earnings this year than we did last year. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. While PPP Member of Parliament Juan Egel has been released on self-bail following his arrest, allegations of assault against an officer has been led against him. However, the Member of Parliament refused to attach his signature to the statement given by the officer. Here are the details. Attorney at law Anil Nandalal said Egil was released on his own recognizance after being arrested by officers at the Brickdown Police Station. This follows the execution of instructions made by Speaker Dr. Barton Scotland to bar the Member of Parliament from entering the building. The case continued when an officer also accused Edgel of assaulting him at the time he was being barred from the Parliament. However, he refused to sign the statement and was again placed on self-bail. We were confronted now with an allegation recorded in the book that Bishop Edgel assaulted a peace officer outside of the Parliament. Now all of you were there and you would have seen and recorded what transpired. 
So we had to we had to deal with that because that never occurred. That was simply a concoction put there to attempt to justify the unlawful arrest and unlawful uh, detention of the bishop. We eventually we refused to sign that, and he was released on his own recognizance. So there is still a report there made by some officer, Denhart, that the bishop assaulted him. And so they want to charge the bishop, or at least there is a report there, alleging that the bishop uh, assaulted some peace officer um, in the precincts of High Street and Brigdam. And of course, you know, that did not happen. Nandlal said the opposition will also be moving to sue officials who may have played a part in fostering the mayhem, both in their personal and official capacity. Because if you sue them in their official capacity alone, then again we burden taxpayers. Because the Attorney General, as you know, is so incompetent, he can't defend anybody officially. So they will lose the cases, and then the taxpayers will be burdened to pay the damages. So we want them to pay personally as well so that this will not occur. Opposition leader Barra Jagdeo said an alternative measure should have been posed instead of imposing standing order 47-2 against his colleague. Um, and if he felt that one Hedgehill was in breach of the standing order, he could have suspended the, the sitting and then invited in the, the chief whip from both sides to address the matter, to say one Hedgehill should either apologize or or something of that sort. Not to go and then invite in the police to come into the chamber, which, uh, you know, in the worst periods in our history, this never happened. He believes this would have avoided tension, which occurred in the House yesterday. Nandla, who expressed similar sentiments, said, expulsion is the most extreme sanction. He said, given the type of act levied against his colleague, the Speaker has erred in his directive. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo is accusing the government of stealing the first set of oil money given to them as a bonus from ExxonMobil. He believes the government may have received more than the 18 million US dollars bonus that the public was told about on Friday last. Here's more. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo said the government has a serious reluctancy for scrutiny. He said new evidence of corruption continues to emerge under the Granger-led administration. Jagdeo believes the drama in Parliament was well orchestrated to distract the public from the signing bonus the government received from ExxonMobil. And, and so we, we intend to go back to who was trying to steal the money. That is what we're going back to because this is a, a distraction for us, frankly speaking. It is a distraction. We will do our duties as members of Parliament. We walked out when we said, you can't, you're going to sit here and just can't participate in the debate, and we went back in to consider the estimates, the other estimates. He went on to accuse the government of attempting to steal the first set of oil money. The opposition leader even believes more bonuses may have been given to the government. It was reported that the government received an 18 million United States dollars bonus from the U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil. After saying that oil and gas were uh, will be safe in their hands, it will bring a better life for all Ghanis, and that we were salivating. They said PPP was salivating to get its hands on oil money. The first set of inflows were they uh, attempted to steal this money. Jagdeo pledged to continue fighting with his colleagues to expose the government at all levels. On the other hand, Jagdeo has called out the Speaker of the National Assembly for not addressing matters of disrespect. He pointed out that the Santa Claus intruder and acts of alleged assaults were condemned by Dr. Scotland. As such, Jagdeo called for an investigation as they will not allow such matters to be swept under the carpet. He also accused Dr. Scotland of blatantly telling lies after the Speaker said he did not instruct the officers to enter the House. If the Speaker categorically denied last night, that he invited the police into the, the, the parliament. So if, if, if he is truthful, then there should be a full-fledged investigation as to who brought the police in to the chamber last, last night. Jack Dio said those championing anti-corruption should keep a keen ear on the matter. 
The government had been questioned time and again by the media about the signing bonus, but the finance minister denied that the government received such from the oil company. The Minister of State Joseph Harmon had refused to answer the question, stating he does not respond to leaks. It was only on Friday, December 8, that the public was told about the U.S. $18 million bonus that the government received. The announcement was made in the National Assembly by Minister of Natural Resources, Rafael Trotman. This caused the opposition leader to call for the resignation of the entire government for deceiving Guyanese. President David Granger says the display of one edge on Monday is unfitting for the National Assembly. The head of state believes that the parliamentarian did not set a good example for the nation's children. President David Granger said opposition parliamentarian Juan Egil and the entire opposition in the National Assembly continue to display vulgarity in the House. Vulgarity is vulgarity. And, you know, um, there's no place for that in the National Assembly. It's a very poor display on, on the part of Mr. Hedgel and his colleagues um, uh, to demonstrate to the public and to our children uh, that the Honorable House should be um, um, you know, the scene of such a disorderly show. The head of state hopes that the opposition discontinues such behavior. When the president addressed the parliament last month, he was met with a protest from the opposition throughout his speech as he was updating the House on several issues. I can't imagine that the, the Chancellor of Judiciary would have to put up with that in the High Court, in the, in the Appeal Court. She's the head. Um, I can't imagine that um, the Speaker should be faced with that type of vulgarity. We have three branches of government, you know, the judicial, the, the legislative and the executive. And every branch has its head, and um, the head of the legislative branch must be treated with respect. We don't treat the chancellor like that, we don't treat the speaker like that, and we don't treat the, the president like that. The head of state also believes that opposition leader Bart Jagdeo has to deal with these matters internally. However, President Granger affirmed that he would welcome the opposition to the table to discuss matters. Do you at all, Mr. President, uh, ex would you at all be exploring the possibility of meeting with the opposition leader to resolve what clearly is a dissent over the last few months? I don't, I, I don't have a problem meeting the leader of the opposition at any time about any matter he wishes to raise with me. Um, but but, the, but I, I think that the treatment uh, meted out to me on the 2nd of November was completely uncalled for. I think the treatment meted out to the Speaker um, this week is completely uncalled for. Uncalled for. And I think the, um, the leader of the opposition needs to deal with these uh, cultural issues within this party. On Monday, opposition member of Parliament, Juan Egil, was ordered out of the House by Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Barton Scotland. The Speaker deemed Edge Hill's remarks as out of order. However, the MP did not move on the Speaker's instruction, which led the House to an adjournment. When the House was called on Tuesday, the Speaker instructed the National Police to bar the MP from entering the precincts of the National Assembly. Edge Hill was subsequently arrested and later released on his own recognizance. The MP has been suspended from the National Assembly for four days. Currently, the Committee of Supply is deliberating on the estimates of the public sector. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Update. Now on the police's blotter. Angani is left in the heart of a mother of three after her eldest daughter disappeared 12 days ago. The 16-year-old left for a lesson in South Rheinwald but was never seen after. Alice Abrams has that story. A mother of three is asking for the public's assistance in finding her 16-year-old daughter, Claudia Haynes. According to Esther Haynes, her child left for lessons in South Romveld on December 1 and never returned home. Haynes said that she has made several reports to the Mocha outpost, but her daughter is yet to be found. I have no idea, no idea I don't have who she is. I call her phone well, when she was when she didn't clean home this Saturday, this Friday, sorry. I call that phone. The phone, the, a guy answered the phone. To me, it sounds like an elderly, a big person answered the phone. 
when I, the person asked me, who's me? Well, I never tell them who's me. I said, who's you? And the person uh, turned and tell me, who's me? Mom, 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 this phone is my son's so phone. So, what's that? And I never think. Now, when I call the phone again, with her, call the phone, the phone ring and ring out. I use my friend phone, my friend call when she calls phone the phone ring and the person answers the song like an Eastern young voice answer the phone fine 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 give me a number and when I call the number the number is from some lady from Grove because said the phone leaving a bus. The woman believes that the domestic issues in the home may have driven the child away. The Mocker resident is pleading for her child to return home. Well I never never this is history for me I never know Claudia is a child like this that she will never turn up at home. She knows she always mean or always be as friends. Nobody don't know what kind of friends me and her be. She will talk anything with me and I will keep it confidential. So I don't know what make her do that. What is her problem? I could beg her, please come back. I'm really dying inside inwardly, but nobody don't know it. I just keep a smile on my face just to hold me up when the days come. If she could please let me hear her voice when I call her and let me know if she's okay. If anyone may know the whereabouts of the Carnegie School of Home Economics student, contact can be made to 659-4862 or the nearest police station. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. President David Granger says he made a decision as head of the government to have the signing bonus from U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil. President Granger says the transaction was not done in a secret manner, but one with the interests of the nation at heart. Find out more in this Nikhil Jondu report. President David Granger, during an interview with the local media today, explained that he is aware of the signing bonus made by U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil in September 2016, the head of state added that the 18 million U.S. dollars, which is in an account at the Bank of Guyana, is not being used for secret purposes. I am the head of government. I am responsible. I am aware of it. Um, and um, it is a legitimate government of Guyana um, uh, exercise. And that, um, I'm aware that it is in the Bank of Guyana in escrow. Once it's an escrow account, it means that it cannot be used for purposes for which, are not, which are not intended. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a legitimate um, government of Ghana practice, and um, the money is not, um, has not been dishonestly acquired and will not be used for purposes which not, for which it's not intended. The president noted that the monies will be used to defend issues perceived to be of national importance in the event of a national security threat to the country. President Granger maintained that the signing bonus was not kept as a secret. I don't, you know, um, I, if I can put it this way, you know, um, it's not a question of secrecy, you know. Um, evidence of non-disclosure is not, uh, is not, um, does not mean that uh, it's, it's, there's evidence of any uh, intention of, of deception, you know. Um, there's no intention to deceive, but there was no need to, to make it public. It's a, pub, it's, it's, it's a governmental decision. I make governmental decisions all the time, but it's not deceptive. You know, it, the transaction was conducted on government letterhead paper between two government agencies, two state agencies, the Bank of Guyana and the Ministry of Finance. It's not a secret. But why, was, why, 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 why were there constant denials when questions were put to the relevant ministers? Well, I'm not sure that all the ministers are aware of the transaction. The Minister of Finance is not? I know that the, the, um, the transaction was conducted to the ministers, um, the head of the, uh, uh, the secretary, what used to be Secretary of Treasury, the Financial Secretary. But as I pointed out, it is on government paper, it's between the Bank of Guyana, it's a legitimate transaction, and I'm aware of it, and I'm responsible for everything surrounding that transaction. Minister of Natural Resources, Rafa Trotman, made the disclosure during his presentation that the government had received a signing bonus in September 2016. 
The Natural Resources Minister also announced that the money was collected to be used to safeguard the nation's resources and bar the controversy from outside forces. Minister Trotman said the government has retained two reputable international law firms in the border controversy. Meantime, on Sunday, ExxonMobil country manager for Guyana, Rod Henson, had said signing bonuses are customary and normal in many petroleum agreements. Henson believes that the company is committed to transparency. Uh, we uh, operate with the highest standards of business conduct. I'll say finally that uh, we, we support transparency, absolutely, we're members of EITI, uh, and when we become, when Guyana becomes a fully EITI com compliant country, these types of payments will be made, uh, made public as part of that process. We absolutely support transparency. I will say one more thing is that uh, in terms of transparency though, re disclosure of these terms is something that should be consistent across the industry instead of one one company. Transparency initiatives in order to be successful, you know, should should protect proprietary and commercial information, uh, should make ensure that they don't violate any country's laws, and should apply to all companies in the extractive industry. Nikhil John the reporting for MTV News Update. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich revealed that the entire cabinet was not to be told of the money Guyana received from the oil giant. He made it clear that he was one of the persons who advised the president not to publicize the signing bonus. Here's Nikhil Jondo again. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich has come forward and acknowledged that he is one of the advisors who advised the head of state, David Granger, not to make a public pronouncement on his signing bonus. The Foreign Affairs Minister told members of the media that only a limited number of cabinet ministers were granted access to the information. The, the receipt of the money was not a secret. It was discussed and that is clear. People will forget and, you know, I mean, I'm just, I can't blame them for that. As regards the use of the money, only a few of them would have been formally apprised of that for reasons that had to do with if you want something to be kept reasonably secret, then you tell as few people as possible. That's, that is the point. Minister Greenwich said, now that the information is out in the public, several embassies have expressed grave concern of the sensitive issues at hand. He noted that the chartered accountant, who have made and continue to make statements about the signing bonus, is inappropriate, which can lead to other interested oil companies to avoid Guyana. If you see a company being harassed in a country and you can't say, well, they are being harassed because they've done this in this country, the new investor wants to know, well, is it my turn next? You have companies, There's, there, there are two oil companies trying to conclude agreements for operating on the shelf. Not 130 like Brazil, but two. And they are, they are there uh, worrying as to whether it will be their turn next. Minister Greenwich also noted that the monies were never intended to be used for the government ministers. What the monies would be used for, he posited, is to pay legal fees once the venezuela guyana border controversy goes to the International Court of Justice. The money for the lawyers we are talking about is for a team yet to be recruited in order to carry the case to the ICJ. It's a far more expensive and a bigger team. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. President Granger will take the blame for the signing bonus received from ExxonMobil because of his immunity as president to save his cabinet. This statement was made by suspended opposition parliamentarian Juan Agel, who alleges that the president has admitted planning, executing and concealing the bonus, actions Agel deems as criminal. Here's more. The head of state has used his immunity to save him from being prosecuted, according to opposition member of parliament, Juan Agel. Agel was at the time speaking about the signing bonus that ExxonMobil gave Guyana. He also labeled the president's action as criminal. And because he enjoys specific immunity in the constitution, he will take the rap. Because the president cannot be charged in a court of law, so 
anything about going after the corruption of the ministers. I'm the president, I can't be charged, I can't be taken before a court of law. He said public relations has grown significantly when the Granger-led administration took office in 2015. He is also questioning why the Department of Public Information was allowed to use sums allocated to the government information agency. So public relations in the government has grown significantly. Some ministers have up to four staff in their PR outfit, their own cameramen. You, you the guys in the reporters, you know, that you, you're in contact with them all the time. So you have a public relations outfit that has swollen, which would have shrunk Gina, but you have expanded DPI and more money is being put there. So they would have to answer to that. They know Edgel was going there. He believes the administration is corrupted with their alleged high-handed tactics and lies. According to Edgel, more scandals are yet to be brought to the forefront to expose the government. Speaking about his suspension, Edgel made it clear that the government is not off the hook as he plans to return to Parliament after his four days of suspension is completed. As he will not return until the scrutiny of the estimates is over, he said the budget will be further dissected by requesting clarity through written questions to respective ministers. Still on the signing bonus. A local attorney is peeved with the manner in which the ExxonMobil signing bonus to Guyana was revealed and the separation of the money from the consolidated fund. Charles Robinson Jr., who holds a master's degree in oil and gas enterprise management, also made it clear that the signing bonus is not free money Guyana has collected. Nikhil Jondu tells us more. The United Kingdom had awarded Charles Robinson Jr. a chiefening scholarship to pursue a Master of Science degree in Oil and Gas Enterprise Management at the University of Aberdeen, Scotland, which he achieved successfully. Since the former Member of Parliament returned to Guyana, he had been busy in the oil and gas sector. During an exclusive interview with News Update, the young attorney explained what a signing bonus is. On Tuesday, President David Granger said the government had a signing bonus with U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil. For example, if you use an analogy with uh, football players or any athletes, when they get a contract, they get a signature bonus, and that's just their money, and they, have, they just continue to get their payment on, the, on their contract. For, in, when it comes to the extractive industry, and oil and gas in particular, if you get a signature bonus, that's just advance payment for that money that they expect to make as a result of the profitability of extracting that, that um, resource. Um, but that's not free money, first of all. That's really important for Guyanese people to understand that it's not free money. Ramson Jr. believes that the explanation given by President Granger about the secrecy of the bonus is illogical. He claimed if indeed a country is faced with an imminent national security threat, the government has not taken measures to secure the country's resources. If Venezuela was going to um, do anything about uh, Guyana's oil and gas industry, oh, they would have done it already because they've already started drilling, right? I mean, it's as simple as that. There has been no effort to stop the production of oil and gas in the immediate future, which is only two and a half years away. Ramson Jr. also believes that the populace will always eye the government with suspicion due to the manner in which the bonus was revealed. It vaporizes any possible confidence or hope that this government is capable of handling prudently and responsibly uh, this oil and gas sector. Um, and I think all Guyanese should be worried um, that if this is a sign of things to come, if this is the method of dealing with the oil and gas industry, um, then we're going to be in a, we're just going to end up as another corrupt nation around the world who has suffered the resource curse. Both the government and ExxonMobil have disclosed that a signing bonus was made in 2016. The 18 million US dollars that the government received was placed in a separate account at the Bank of Guyana. A top chartered accountant is calling for criminal charges to be laid against the state for failing to disclose that there was a signing bonus and that the government ministers have lied to the nation. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Update. 
The opposition party continues to vent their anger for not being allowed enough time to scrutinize the budget estimates. The party claims it is a strategic ploy of the government to avoid exposures of inaccuracy and lack of transparency. Here's more. The opposition is lambasting the Speaker of the National Assembly as they have been denied to question aspects of the budget estimates. This comes as ministers now have more departments and programs, but the time to scrutinize the ministry has not increased. Clement Rohi, during the opposition press conference on December 14, said the sum received by the Guyana Defense Force should be flagged. Rohi said the GDF has received more than the amounts allotted to the regions and even ministries. Rohi believes the sum is too hefty as the Defense Force was already in receipt of supplementary provisions for this year. A $12 billion budget was proposed for the Ghana Defense Force in the 2018 budget. Even when it was reconvened, uh, made it clear from the seat that it was not allowing questions or debates on the uh, different heads. And those different heads included the Ghana Defense Force. So I was denied the possibility to raise and to ask any question in respect to the budgetary allocation for the Ghana Defense Force. He stated that huge sums in overpayment were pointed out in the Auditor General report under the said sector. Rohi also questioned how a vast sum of materials in a small amount of time is being requested by the Ghana Defense Force. Meanwhile, Opposition MP Dharam Kumar Siraj explained that the performance of the agriculture sector has begun to dwindle. He attributed this decline to the lessening budgetary allocations for the sector each year. He also pointed out to the lack of policy measures to address the decline of subsectors with agriculture. That what was avoided in the parliament itself, we will bring to them through various mediums, this being one of them, and then also when we go there in the countryside. To talk about these measures or lack of measures to address deficiencies in the economy itself in each particular sector. Siraj continued to lambast the government as he believes they are not prepared to address accountability and transparency. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates We Can Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us on Monday, December 18 at 7 hours 30 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching.